The Witcher is an adaptation of the books, but lots of people will know about it from the games. How did you go about getting the balance right for the show's aesthetic? Um, I mean, really, we go back to the, the source material, which is the books. Yeah. And what's great to know is that the video games also came from the books. So we're all basing this on the same stories that people fell in love with in Poland, you know, yeah. 30 years ago. Um, so really, there wasn't, there wasn't much of a balance to take. It is, we're going back to this, this source material, which is so rich, and there's so much to be brought out of. Witches are rogues I think that's Kermorin. First look. Oh. Okay, so what I love about this. Well, I mean, and kind of on that note, what I think the series does really well is balance a number of different, I think, tones. I mean, you get some scenes that are like very, very funny, and then you get other scenes that are absolutely horrifying. Right. Um, but it's <laughs> a lot of great action, too. I wondered, uh, where did that come in? Was that something that you were encouraging the writers to bring out? Was that coming straight from the novels? So it's a little bit of both. The novels mm -hmm. are hilariously funny, which is one of the first things that really stuck out to me, mm -hmm. because that's not something that you see a lot in fantasy television, mm -hmm. right? Fantasy, because it deals with big themes and war and death, it's like, it's a very earnest uh, uh, medium in general. But the books are really funny. Mm -hmm. The other thing, though, that I love that you just brought up is the writers themselves. Mm -hmm. So. The writers write their episodes. I don't write them. I don't want them to try to sound like me. Mm -hmm. That's not the idea, especially in television that's sort of binge-worthy. Mm -hmm. You don't want every episode to have the exact same tone. It would get really boring over eight hours. So I really pushed the writers to embrace their own episodes and to bring their own voice to them. Mm -hmm. So it's one of my favorite parts of the first season is you have, you know, you can watch an episode and go like, okay, that writer's pretty dark because <laughs> there's a lot of, you know, sort of gritty suspense or horror. Mm -hmm. And then there's episodes that are really funny or more that are epic adventures you know we even have episodes that I would say are slightly romantic in nature mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and to me that's one of the best things that you get in television is you get to run that gamut as long as it all falls under the same umbrella of the show. it's interesting because people ask me about the female characters a lot and sort of the the complications of them but it's really just what real women are like anyway right I mean it's strong in some circumstances vulnerable in others occasionally bold occasionally bitchy occasionally silent to me, what I wanted to capture is these women before they were seen through the lens of anyone else. Um, in the books, all of the characters are met through Geralt. So you get Geralt's impression of them, and then you get to learn to meet them. And I wanted the world to see Ciri who she was first. Can you tell me how you came to cast Henry Cavill as Geralt? <laughs> I can. Um, so Henry is a huge gamer, in fact. He had played all of the Witcher games and had played through Witcher 3 several times, and he was in love with the character of Geralt. So he actually approached us as soon as he heard that Netflix was making a show. Um, approached us, had his agents, he'll tell a very funny story because he had his agents call every other day to see what the progress was. And eventually someone said to me, will you please sit down with Henry Cavill? <laughs> um, so we did, and we had a great conversation, but I was honest with him. I said, we're not, we're not at a place to start casting yet. And even when we are, I'm gonna need to meet a lot of people before I know we found our Geralt. Um, and I did, I met with 207 other potential Geralts. Um, at the end of the day, though, I kept hearing Henry's voice in my head, and I called him and we ended up meeting again in New York, and he auditioned for the role. He actually got to read for the character, which was incredible. And those of us in the room that day, we knew that we had found our guy, and then you felt yeah. that way, too, when yeah, you saw the tapes. And, and once we like, what's your take on why this is our next fantasy TV obsession? You know, I think that um, what Game of Thrones did for us is blow open the doors of fantasy. To mm -hmm. say that it's not just for um, geeky, nerdy <laughs> genre people, <laughs> um, but to say that actually there's something there for everyone. And that's what I think people are looking for in television right now, mm -hmm. which is perhaps a touch of escapism, a touch of a world that doesn't look like ours, but you also have to be able to relate to the journeys of the characters. And that, to me, is what you really find with Geralt and Ciri and Yennefer, mm -hmm. is they are quote-unquote normal people. I mean, you know, they're, they're <laughs> magicians and, take and a few powers, you know, yeah. <laughs> monster hunters. But um, they have the same emotional range that we have. Mm -hmm. They fall in love. They uh, hate each other at times. And I think that that's kind of what people are looking for, is a journey that represents their own life, but <laughs> a couple extra bells and whistles. <laughs> I prefer our audience to evolve with our characters. And so that everyone's kind of on the same page and moving forward through stories, not necessarily in a linear fashion, but in, in a way where an audience member understands how this character got from point A to point B emotionally. Um, so Vesmir in the bathtub, that's a, it's a different twist on Geralt's in the bathtub. Every Witcher property needs one of these scenes now. I think uh, it's a new rule. It's a new rule for any Witcher show, bathtub scene. 
season two is already confirmed. What do you want to bring to this se second season that makes it even better than the first season? It's interesting because our approach with season two is different. Um, season one, it's all about world setup. It's making sure that that you understand the continent where this world takes place um, and that you also know and fall in love with these characters. Season two then allows us to have, I think, a little more focused of storytelling. Uh, the story, uh, tell me I can it's, tell you, goes fast and wild. Um, it it's is, got a lot yeah. of drive to it. Uh, and so, of course, we, we talked about your writers a little bit, and you, of course, yourself have been have been writing. You've been in writers' rooms for, for most of your career, and you've been an EP on shows. How are things different this time around as, like, the <laughs> showrunner? I moved my way up through the system, um, and it gave me the best possible education. I mean, I think that's what I can sort of lean back on as a showrunner for the first time. I mean, this is not... The Witcher is not a small production. Mm -hmm. I, I dove in deep the first time. <laughs> but I have this incredible sort of, you know, two decades of experience that really got me on set a lot, working with actors a lot, working with directors. And that's the stuff I lean on. Um, you know, the other thing I think the big lesson for me is at the beginning I wanted to do everything myself. I thought that was my <laughs> job. Right. Um, and in fact, it's not <laughs> at all. Um, the best thing that I can do is hire obviously incredible writers who, I mean, these stories are really theirs as much as they are mine. And then trust the team of directors and producers and cast in the, in the crew and let them be the experts at their jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and I kind of just make sure that it's all staying in the initial vision that we all set out. The big thing that, that I learned on uh, Daredevil and Defenders and Umbrella Academy is about adaptation and about taking something that has a huge fan base and that people really, really love in its existing form and translating it to a new form. Um, and the changes that have to be made between a comic book and television, or between a beloved book series and television. It's Produce. For them. Coin. See, I like this Vesemir. I think he's got attitude. Good business. It's a wink and a nod to the camera, and it's so much fun. What's the one lesson you've got from this doing this first season that you're going to take and apply to season two? Then? Oh God, there's so many. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I would say the big thing is really pre-planning. So the very first time that you're doing a television show, mm -hmm. you can only plan so much because it's all brand new. This feels now like we're putting a little bit more of a like comfy slipper back on <laughs> as opposed to yeah. a brand new shoe. So what we really took from it is the the ability to plan ahead. So um, spoiler, all the scripts are written. They're yeah. done. We know what we're shooting. So the great news is, is that we have them all now and we can make the plan. We can stick to the plan. We know what works and what doesn't work. And um, I don't know that making television is ever smooth. But I think there will be a few less bumps this time. <laughs> he told me that he took the whole costume home with him. Yes. Did, did he tell you about walking around the house wearing it? Yes. <laughs> you know, he, it was important to him. And it's one of the reasons why Henry is such, a, such an important member of our team. Is because it's not just a role to him. He wanted, for instance, the armor to look like it had been worn for years and years. So he made breakfast in it and he would sleep in it. We're like, you don't have to do that, by the way. Um, but he is that invested in embodying this character. Well, which is an expert in Seems like a kick-ass woman. This is stuff we would never, ever be able to do in live action. See, I'm a monster hunter. Every deal has a price. Ghouls. And interesting, so this Leshy, we're going to introduce a Leshy in, in season two. And this Leshy is actually feels like a different um, a different type of leshy and maybe that's a little uh, that's a little mystery for fans of season two start to wonder why they are two different types of leshy monsters.